Um, now, something that is concerning ethically for a lot of people with diamonds is blood diamonds, the dark side of diamonds. Yes. What What's your view on that? My view is 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 a little complex. Uh, it's not it's not a quick uh, a quick answer. It's a good thing you're asking this uh, in this segment, not into a quick fire. Um, first of all, there 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 are and there always has been and there probably always will be exploitation of people in war torn countries where they where they aren't developed, and there are areas, let's say in Africa, that uh, you know they have you know, these diamonds that are sitting there, they're small, they're portable, and they're valuable. And of course, they're going to be exploited. And that's a horrible thing. And everybody should be doing whatever they can to try to minimize uh, that uh, exploitation when possible. That said, people tend to uh, make knee-jerk reactions based on, let's say, watching a Leonardo DiCaprio movie, Blood Diamonds. And they're all of a sudden like, okay, diamonds from Africa are terrible. And I think what that does is it does a disservice to the people in Africa, and it kind of paints a broad brush when, when a more nuanced approach is necessary. When you're buying a diamond in the UK or the US, 99 per, over 90% of those diamonds are coming from 60 or 70 manufacturing companies. These companies have a strict pipeline where they actually either control the mines that they're that they're getting the diamonds from, or they're partnered with one of the mining companies like De Beers or Al Rosa or whichever of the major conglomerates that are that are out there that mine the diamonds. It's a strict pipeline that goes from those 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 legitimate mines to the manufacturers who cut the diamonds to the New York or Hong Kong or UK offices where they ultimately end up in the retail stores. When you start looking to avoid blood diamonds that with all intents and purposes are not going to end up in your pipeline anyways, what you're doing is, is you're taking business away from some industries that are helping people in Africa develop. You're far more likely to be buying a diamond that comes from Botswana or South Africa, where those diamond interests have help the people there immeasurably. In Botswana, for example, the money that they've made, the government has made from, they have a legitimate stable government for, for quite some time. And the money that they've, that they've made from the diamond uh, industry has been used to essentially eradicate AIDS. Uh, they've seen their HIV pop, you know, uh, infection rates drop dr drastically over the last 20 years. Uh, the average The average wages and the quality of life is far greater in the areas where they have these diamond mines and these diamond cutting factories in Botswana than you would in other areas in Africa. So when you walk into a store and you say, well, I don't want to buy a diamond. And, and by the way, if you say, I don't want to touch the industry at all, that's a perfectly valid response. My problem more is a lot of companies that do um, what I'd like to say, very superficial marketing that they claim to be you know, conflict-free or beyond conflict-free. Because all the diamonds that you're seeing, all the, all the major retailers in America, the, the UK, anywhere in Europe, they all uh, commit to the Kimberley process, which is making sure that their diamonds are coming from this, uh, this pipeline that, that I talked about previously. So there are companies out there that claim to be beyond conflict-free. For example, that's a tagline that I've seen. And what they're doing is they're ensuring that these diamonds are not coming from they're, they're claiming that they're doing, uh, they're doing more to ensure that those diamonds are not coming from these uh, you know, war-torn areas. What they offer on their site, though, are lots of diamonds from Canada and lots of diamonds from Russia. Now, those pose two different ethical dilemmas for people. One is, you know, if, you, if you avoid buying diamonds from Africa, where 99.9% .9 of the diamonds that would end up in your store would most likely be from a legitimate business that's helping the people in Africa. And then you end up buying, buying diamonds that come from Russia. Russia doesn't exactly have the best track record when it comes to human rights. Uh, you know, Al Rosa is, is owned by the, the Russian states. You know, they, they, they have a significant ownership stake there. <laughs> you know, is, is it better to, to deprive the people from Africa and give that money to people who are threatening to invade Ukraine, for yeah. example? Yeah, yeah. You know, that's a, that's a very complex question. 
Or would you rather give money to Canada, which I love Canada. Canada is an amazing place, but that's a very wealthy country that doesn't really need that money too badly. So where are you, where are you drawing the line? How are you okay. making these decisions? Okay. I, just to complete transparency, I have no agenda here. I, yeah. I'm, I'm here to ask questions because I don't know. I'm coming from an, an, a curiosity angle rather than having a particular angle. But how much of the percentage would you say of um, diamonds globally come from corrupt or uh, um, uh, ethically void countries uh in africa where it's predominantly yes i've, I've seen the, the the film with leonardo dicaprio blood diamond and and yes that has sort of fashioned some of my thought but just to get an idea what sort of percentage of of the global market is coming from african war-torn countries so i don't have a specific answer for that i don't have an exact number but what i can tell you is that Anywhere between 75 and 90% of all diamonds that are coming out of Africa alone are coming from mining operations. And those are all run by legitimate organizations. Right. The diamonds that, they're, they're the other way that you can actually uh, find you know, natural diamonds, I believe it's called alluvial, uh, alluvial mining, which is uh, sifting through uh, riverbeds, kind of like what you saw in the gold rush in California. Yeah. And you can find them that have somehow come out through through underwater streams and whatnot. So theoretically, that's the only one that's accessible to, you know, people other than the, 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 the factories. But of that, you know, we're saying that 10 to 15 percent or whatever that number is exactly from Africa is coming from alluvial, alluvial mining doesn't mean that that 15 percent is coming from those war torn countries. We don't know. We don't know what percentage is going to you know, those are the only ones that are strictly out of the hands, but it's going to be a minority of that because you have alluvial mining in legitimate countries like South Africa and Botswana and other countries that have stable governments and are doing these things. Mm. And on top of that, um, you know, the, the talk of blood diamonds came out in the 80s and 90s, which was definitely fair at that, at that stage. They didn't have the strict process, what, we, what they would call the Kimberley process before that. And at that point, Africa was making up 80 to 90% of all the diamonds in the world. Now they don't even make up half. So what we're talking about is a small percentage of alluvial diamonds, which is a small percentage of overall diamonds that are coming from Africa, which is a small percentage of the overall diamonds in the world. Right.